blaming others. That's something that you have done throughout your witness statement, isn't it? I mean your second witness statement to this inquiry. The constant theme throughout it, do you agree, is that you blame the UK government for the slowness of its approach in the initial stages of the pandemic. Do you agree? I don't accept that I blame others um, throughout the statement. I accept that I point out where I think things were wrong. And in particular, I do believe that my position is vindicated in terms of the fact that Boris Johnson and his government were too slow to act at the start of the pandemic. I just want to go, if I can, please, to your 12th of March statement. If we could go, please, to page 98 and to paragraph 383. <clears throat> I'm just going to take this from the outset, Miss O'Neill, what you've set out there, mm -hmm. that it's a reality that as the pandemic progressed, the approach of the Tory government to the pandemic was not consistent with the approach by the executive. As I've acknowledged, we were largely aligned with the UK for the reasons I have explained. But as the pandemic progressed, we did adopt a more localised response, which responded to the realities of the pandemic in the North. The approach of the Tory government to the pandemic is in many ways epitomised by the evidence which has emerged of partying in number 10 Downing Street in breach of the regulations introduced to protect the public from the pandemic. Staff parties of the type which are now a matter of public knowledge, did not occur in our local context and would frankly have been unthinkable. I believe it's emblematic of the failure of the Johnson administration to appropriately engage with and respond to the gravity of the pandemic and its impact on the lives of those we are elected to represent. Ms O'Neill, there's no reflection, I don't think, nor any insight in your witness statement about any of the hurt or any of the problems that you caused by attending the funeral of Mr Story. Do you agree? I think I have addressed that in my statement and in previous statements, but if you if you allow me, I'd be happy to address it right now. Certainly. Sure, thank you. And maybe perhaps even to go directly to the families because it's those people that have been impacted by my actions and if that's okay I would like to address them. I'm afraid Ms O'Neill you're here to give evidence not to address people. I think you need to give your evidence you're to yourself. me. Okay, to okay, okay, sorry my lady. I mean I, I have to say uh, up front and I, and I do want to direct, uh, I'm glad that we're actually able to speak about this so early on in the evidence because there is no doubt that the families themselves have been through an experience that there is no coming back from. It's been absolutely horrendous and to lose loved ones in a way in which they have has been just absolutely horrendous. I have met some of the families individually. I have equally listened to some of the testimony from or the testimony that was offered at the start of the inquiry. And no family should ever have to go through what these families um, have went through. I also know equally that my actions compounded the hurt and that horrible experience that those families have went through. I also know that my actions also angered the families, and for that, I'm truly sorry. I am sorry for going, and I'm sorry for the hurt that's been caused after that. And I want to make that statement very clear on the record again today. Did you realise at the time the hurt and anger that going to the funeral would cause? I didn't, but I ought to have. Could we bring up on screen, please, INQ 0047420, please? These are the minutes of the meeting that took place after the funeral with your executive colleagues. And you addressed them at, well, from the bottom of page one. And if we go over the page, I think you invite your colleagues to divorce their views of Mr. Story from your actions, that you were invited by the family that you were honoured to do so. Huge figure. New thousands would wish to attend. Online streaming watched by 250,000 people. If I go down that a little bit. People entitled to view. People vote with feet. Applause along the Anderson's Town Road. No dilution in my mind, 
a public message. No offence intended. And if we go on, please, to look at page seven. Mr Murphy's not been able to give evidence, but in terms of what he said, rules relaxed, not same circumstances, technicalities. He sets out a bit about his attendance. And then over the page, people can say what they want to say, entitled to opinion. I'm entitled to be sceptical. You were entirely unapologetic on the 2nd of July, weren't you? So I think that I, I have reflected there. I think I would go further than what I said in that minute. It was immediately after um, the funeral itself. And I think what I've said there in terms of not diluting the public message, um, that was wrong because clearly I did and I have acknowledged that. And Equally, I've worked every day ever since to regain public confidence and trust. I think um, I took every opportunity that I had in terms of the aftermath in both the Assembly Chamber, um, in front of the Scrutiny Committee. Um, I've said it publicly on a number of occasions about how sorry I am, and I am absolutely from the bottom of my heart sorry, because I would never, ever set out to hurt people. Can I just ask, in relation to your witness statement, when you made your witness statement, you made the criticisms of Boris Johnson's government and the allegations of partying in Downing Street. Wasn't that a bit hypocritical, knowing what you knew by the time you made that statement? I don't think so, because um, they're two very different things in terms of the Boris Johnson approach of partying the whole way through the pandemic and drinking their way through it, to be quite Blunt. Well, we, um, didn't, we, we didn't find out about the party until after the pandemic. I mean, what, what you did was to do something that the bereaved couldn't do, the normal bereaved couldn't do, um, because you wanted to go to a friend's funeral. Isn't that then saying that what Boris Johnson's government did was wrong is a bit hypocritical? No, I don't think so, because what I did, I did under the understanding of the regulations at that time. And I know we don't want to open that up, my lady, um, but I have answered to that. Um, but I do accept wholeheartedly that I um, in some way damaged our executive relations with colleagues um, who had been working very hard with me the whole way through. Um, I also accept wholeheartedly that um, I damaged the public health messaging and I had work to do to regain that, but I did that. I worked hard to regain that trust and confidence and to lead us for the next year and a half through the pandemic. So the only reason I'm pressing on the statement is the point of principle is that those who set the rules should obey the rules both in spirit and in the letter. That's really the point I'm making. Yeah, and I should have anticipated the, the outworking of what I did. Sorry to interrupt. Was it really that difficult to anticipate the outworking of what you did, Miss O'Neill? It was in so far as I as far as I was concerned, on a personal invite attending a cortege of thirty people. Um, and I tried not to open this up, but just that's the basis in which I attended. Um, but I, I fully, I, I've said it, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what it did. I should have you know, anticipated the fallout. I should have anticipated what would happen in the aftermath. And that's why I've worked hard to try to regain that confidence and trust. Ms. And equally, and more importantly, I think it's about all of the families of bereaved and people who went through a horrific circumstance and the experience that they have had. Um, it's just horrendous, and I would never, never set out to try to like compound that or in any way make it more difficult for them to deal with their grief. One of the first questions I asked you was whether or not people from Northern Ireland got the leadership that they deserved from you. How can you maintain that they did in light of what you've just accepted? Because I, th I didn't say that um, everything was perfect all of the time. I do believe that I did lead from the front the whole way through the pandemic, as did all of my executive colleagues. We've had difficulties. We've had challenging times. We've worked through very difficult times, which I'm sure you'll want to speak about. But I do believe that I, I led the whole way through, albeit I've put my hands up in terms of the funeral itself and how I shouldn't have done that, because that took away from all of the work that I had put into 
uh, trying to lead us through the pandemic, which was hard on everybody right across society. We were faced as an executive with hugely difficult, um, challenging positions to take, uh, decisions to take, um, and I worked day and night to get us through this pandemic. So, apart from this one time, I do believe that my leadership was strong through the pandemic.